Hey guys, welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. Today we're going to be going over on how to make money in Tarkov. Now, Escape from Tarkov is mainly about making money, not necessarily surviving or getting kills. It's about making money off the loot you find in the maps or the loot you can create in your hideout. So today we're going to go over three different ways of how you can make money and make the most profit in Escape from Tarkov so you guys can make the most money so you guys can kind of chat out and be on the same level as those higher level people even if though you may not need to be at the same high level uh, but once you get the hideout and you have enough money you can buy whatever you'd want. Um, so I'm going to go over three things to make you guys some money so let me show you guys how to make some money in Escape from Tarkov. So pretty much what I'm going to do here is going to go through the hideout by each station and just kind of show you guys what items to make for the most profit. Um, so the first thing we're going to start with is the lavatory. So the lavatory is pretty simple. Your two items you want to focus on is your mag case and the grenade case as well. Um, this way you can make the cases from the fuel cans that you've used so you can get some money back because you can use the gas cans all the way down to zero. And then go ahead and make these cases and make 300 to 400k back on your gas that you bought so you can at least make money back now with the three mag cases you can make them into a scab junk box which sells for like 1.6 mil so that is kind of a way to kind of i guess make the mag cases put mags in them and then when you have too many mag cases make them into a scab case and sell that the other item and the only other item i could see actually making profit in the lavatory part of the hideout is the fp100 filters in the beginning of the wipe now, later in the wipe, they become a little too cheap to actually make money off of with how expensive water filters and air filters are. Uh, but early wipe, they are a great way to make five to 750K right off the bat. If you just buy the two water filters for 100, the air filters for 40, and the tool, tool set for 20, you're making two times to three times your money back. So that is a great way of early wipe. However, late wipe, it kind of, the price drops enough where it's kind of not worth it. The next thing is going to be your workbench. So the only things I make out of my workbench is gunpowder, M61, and M995. M61 and M995 are the most profitable two items. They kind of go back and forth just because everyone wants that top tier ammo. So keep that in mind when you're trying to craft items. I usually craft PS ammo in the blue gunpowder, the smoke and two M67 grenades in the, uh, the green gunpowder, and then I use the green and the blue with the matches to make red gunpowder. And that's how I make my M61. Is I just do that three times throughout the day. Buy the two Helix. And make 300 M61 rounds that will sell for 2,500 a round. So I'm making almost six. I think the lowest I've ever bought the whole thing. Or sold the whole thing for was like 2,000 a round. Which was like $600,000. Which in my case is way more profit than I put into it. So... Try that out, M61, M995, make the gunpowder throughout the day, and then do your longer uh, crafts overnight if you don't have the stuff. If you have enough stuff for both of them, do one during the day, do one overnight so that you can maximize your profits. Now, the Intel station's a little weird this way because Bitcoins went through the roof, so GPUs kind of got ruined by the big nerf because they tried to nerf it when the Bitcoins went back down. They didn't increase GPUs again. So generally GPUs were the best way to make money in the Intel in the Intel Center. However, this wipe I've found um, flash drives and in folder of intelligence have been the best. Um, I've been crafting some VPXs depending if I have the materials for it. So GPUs right now are super expensive to make, and right now with Bitcoin being so low, people aren't buying them for the 1.8 mil they were. So right now they're kind of a not as profitable. So I would kind of stick to the flash drives, Intel folders, and VPX drives, just because those are going to give you the most profit of the Intel. We obviously have our Bitcoin farm. Pretty much, I don't even have mine maxed out just because of the way Bitcoins were this wipe. And I think wipes right around the corner, so there's no point in me even worrying about the Bitcoin at this point. Um, usually I'd recommend do maxing it out. However, this wipe, the GPUs were way too expensive. They're 1.8 mil a pop, and they're only giving me like five or 10 minutes off my time, so I didn't even worry about it at that point. But Bitcoin farm is at least, like, at least get it level one so you can at least start producing that Bitcoin, just so it's a casual amount of income coming into your head out. So the last station we're gonna talk about is the med station. Now that we obviously have our defibs and our lead X's that will usually drop price over the wipe, which just like the FP100 filter, late wipe, they're not gonna be super worth it. Early wipe, they're gonna be a lot more worth it. Now the only other things that are going to make super amounts of profit is going to be stims. Um, now the red stim isn't 
super profitable just because of the price of everything. However, your antidotes, your mules, and your SJ6s are going to be your best profit to make from the hideout. Now, you do need a red stim to make the SJ6, so you can make the red stim however you're not making as much money as the other stuff. And you can use that red stim craft to create the SJ6 blue stims here to make profit. Because the SJ6 and the mules usually go for anywhere between 60 and 80 a pop. And you're usually putting in only about 40 to 50k. So it's not as much profit, but it's still profit. So if you maximize all your stations at once, you're making quite a bit of profit if you can try to make money off each little thing. The second way to make money in Tarkov is by hitting those certain loot spots that are going to have the most loot for you to get out of that area. Now there are different like high tier and low tier spots that I have highlighted on my map here. Orange being the high tier, green being the low tier. And obviously corresponding to how much traffic they have, the higher tier areas are going to have more people and maybe even bosses around. Um, so here is the customs map. Um, pretty much on the left here you have Big Red and Storage, which are pretty low tier places. Um, they have a couple gun, they have a couple gun, gun cases. Uh, bags, filing cabinets, that kind of base stuff. And then for other low tier areas, you have the construction building, you have old gas, which is pretty much just a scav farm essentially, and giving tree, um, and the one stash in the corner. But other than that, it's pretty much just a scav farm. You have the four buildings between the uh, high tier filter building is what a lot of people call it, and then the power building. Um, these places provide great loot. There's a lot of places to look for the loot. So keep an eye out for those spots. The last thing is going to be the radio tower. There's a lot of gun parts and gun magazines, gun cases up there. So check that out too. Uh, it's a low-key place where a lot of people don't loot as well. So keep that in mind when you're traveling up there. Is It's most likely not going to be touched. Your high-tier loot areas are going to be dorms, the big construction building, or Alamo, Fortress, whatever you want to call it, new customs, um, power, new gas, the filter building, and then Intel. Intel's probably the biggest one. However, it did get nerfed recently, so it's not as good as it used to be. And then when, since there's a spawn rank, so unfortunately people just don't go there anymore. Alamo or Fortress is probably the highest tier loot spawn. There's a lot of cases, a lot of PvP. The boss can spawn there. Same with Dorms. Dorms with a lot of locked rooms that you can get good items out of. As well as Rashala the boss does spawn there as well. As well as the PvP aspect of it as well. New gas is pretty much just a high tier loot just because Rashala can spawn there. So if you are able to get there and take them out or kill out another couple scabs, you may get some good stuff. There is a safe in the uh, gas station as well, so keep that in mind. Power. Power has a wide variety of utility spawns, fuel spawns, valuable spawns in the basement, gun spawns on the uh, gas station side. It's an all-around kind of well-rounded area for loot. And then you have your filter building, which can spawn air filters, water filters, fuel. There's a grenade case. There's two computers in there. It's a nice little kind of quick grab-and-go place. Um, however, it's very highly trafficked, so keep an eye out for that when you're trying to push that building or taking it over or you're in there already. Someone will probably be pushing you at some point. Now, Shoreline being my favorite map to kind of loot and such, just because I, it's a well-rounded map. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Um, my favorite thing is probably resort just because there's so many locked rooms, so many areas to go. Even going in as a scav, there, there's a lot of places you can go into resort 20 minutes in and there'll still be stuff left behind. All the PMCs may have moved out. Um, other scav players will come in though, so keep that in mind. Uh, when looting this place, again, just I run my scav runs in here all the time. I'll run in the resort, try to find some dead bodies, try to find some doors that were unlocked that maybe loot had been left behind, and try to pick up everybody's scraps, and sometimes I come up with a million dollars worth of stuff. So keep that in mind. You then have cottage for another loot area just because Sanitar can spawn there. There's the two cottages. It's a great place to find scabs as well. And then pier, Sanitar can spawn there again. You also have two safes, two computers and a bunch of filing cabinets. In filing cabinets, you can find flash drives, SSDs, SAS drives, diaries, and that kind of stuff. Your low tier spots, you have weather, power, village, swamp, and scab island. 
Um, a lot of these places are kind of just generic loot. Um, weather does have a safe, so keep that in mind. And computer and tech spawn, so keep that in mind as well. So weather is probably the best of the low tier areas. And then you also have swamp because it's got five stashes in it. And stash runs are just underrated this way. Our last map and probably one of the best places to get profit um, as a scav or a player just trying to get some loot and barter items. Interchange is super good if you want to get in. Um, the orange is the kind of back route to find all the utility and barter items. Where the green route is going in and getting all of the tech spawns. Um, going by Kaiba to see if Kill is dead or players are dead. Um, hitting Mantis and Evercom and those medical areas for lead X's and that kind of stuff. So the orange route is what you want to do if you want to take the route to get kind of like the barter items and the utility spawns. You kind of just go in the back side of the buildings. There's a lot of great stuff on the shelves, uh, in cases, and boxes all over the place. So keep that in mind when you're trying to go this route. Your green route is going to be a little bit more uh, PvP based because you're going to be going towards the center of the mall. So keep that in mind when you're trying to move through the center of the mall. You need to really watch out because there's going to be a lot of people in these areas because you're going to go to the higher tier loot areas. Your main things is going to be Texaho, Ramusin, uh, Tech Lane upstairs, and then you can kind of go through and go downstairs and hit Kaiba, uh, which is probably the most concentrated area for PvP in this map. And then just hit Mantis and Evercom if you need to. Uh, I usually run my... Uh, scav runs here. I usually run it through the back. Um, I'll sometimes go in and try to get tech spawns. Sometimes, I mean, I have gone in as a scav and gotten out with three GPUs here. Uh, it, it's a really great spot and map for loot, period. So sticking on to the interchange here. So our third thing and probably my favorite thing to get money and how to get money in Tarkov, besides pvp and obviously, like we're excluding PvP here, stash runs. Stash runs are super underrated. I have gotten vases, I have gotten teapots, I have gotten lions, M995, M61, M855A1, armor. I've gotten slicks out of case of stashes. They are probably the best way and the most reliable way to make money. But also, if you're a rat player and you don't like the combat as well, this is a great way to kind of move your way around the outside of the map. Uh, while still getting great loot and great possibility for those slicks or hex grids or U locks or Wendy X fills, like just crazy stuff in stashes. You need to try out your stash runs. I'll show some clips of my most recent stash runs here in a couple minutes after we go over the maps so that you guys can kind of see the items that I have found while stash running. So, interchange here. The orange, again, is our primary route. So, you are on the outside of the map, you hit all these dots. Uh, use these maps where you can kind of see the pictures of the stashes and where they are. And then let's say there's a lot of bit stuff going on of power I don't want a part of, whether I'm tired and want to kind of take a slow day. Um, I'll kind of cut through the stores where the green lines are uh, just to kind of pick up some stragglers or some loot and some scavs. Uh, I tend to not do stash runs and interchanges because I'd rather go into the store and try to find that high tier graphics cards, SSDs, that kind of stuff. Woods being our second map that we're going to do stash runs. I'm not a big fan of woods, so I don't go woods much. However, when I do go, I always try to go to stash runs and just try to find people along the way. I feel like in woods I end up just chasing ghosts in the first place. Um, so essentially, again, the orange is our primary route. So we pretty much just go, if we spawn on the left, we'll go up towards the USEC camp, radio tower, weave in between the lakes, and then go towards village. Up the mountain if we need to um, go down towards make sure you hit the compound because great medical and food supplies there now if I am feeling the PvP whether I'm PM singing um, I may want to hit the village I may also want to hit the lumber yard to see if sermons there or if there's any players looking around trying to kill Sturman or trying to just PvP in lumber yard so again primarily orange is gonna be our primary route to hit all the stashes that we can while the green is going to be, if we're feeling a little bit more ballsy and want to go for the PvP, or want to take another route to try to hit a couple more stashes. All right, so for our last stash run map, the Shoreline is by far my favorite map. Um, I scav here all the time just to do stash runs, because you usually only have about 15 minutes anyways. So it gives you enough time to hit a few stashes, get out with the loot you got, and make a good 
five hundred to four million rubles. I think it's the max uh, stash run run I have had in my life. Uh, so again, the orange is our primary. If you start on the left side, you can kind of make your way through the village and swamp to hit all those stashes. Between village and swamp, there's probably about ten or fifteen stashes here. Um, if you count like the outside by suicide fields and such. And then if I am feeling ballsy, I will go through Cottage to try to kill Sanitar if he's there or find any PMCs that are dead or if Sanitar is dead and his goons are dead. Um, sometimes that's just free loot. Uh, if I have a good gun, like if I set, spawn in with 762 BP or a 366 AP or something good like that, I'll go into Resort and try to find some Thick Boys and Chads to kill. Uh, it, sometimes it pays off. Sometimes you walk into a graveyard where there's 15 dead bodies and no one's around it. You can just freely loot the bodies and get free gear. So I always check the resort as a scav. Now I will move my way down to Drunk Tank. And at that point you'll make your way down below Weather Station to hit the 3 by construction. And then make your way up to hit Radio Tower and those stashes around the drone to Road to Customs. Or vice versa going right to left. Do the same route. Uh, if I want to go check Weather Station I'll also go to do that. See if there's a, the safes have been hit. The computer, the tech spawns are still there. You never know. Weather Station has been a weird PvP. I don't know why people are going there in PvP all of a sudden, but people are, so I've been going there to kind of just check out and see if there's any dead bodies. So I hope this video helps you guys out on how to make money. Personally, I love stash runs. Stash runs are my favorite just because it's like a low-key way to decompress from a big gunfight, uh, a crazy raid, or it's a good way just to get that those weird items that you may need for quests, as well as making money. Now, obviously, stash runs aren't the most exciting because you don't get all the PvP all the time. However, I've gotten in quite a bit of con conflict in between Swamp and Village with other scav players, uh, which leads to some fun kind of peeking in just great, great gunfights between two scavs. Um, Shoreline is my all-around best map, though, just because... It's got those great high tier loot areas. It's got those great low tier loot areas. It also has a great stash run potential and great stash run route. I mean, just look at the stashes on this map. There's like 35 or something along on this map. 34, 35, 36 I think is the highest number I see. Which is just outstanding. A lot of potential to make that money. And guys, Tarkov is about making money. It's not about surviving. It's not about the kills. It's about making the money so that you can play the game however you want to play the game. So go out there, do your stash runs, craft your items, go to those loot spots to get that best loot for you, and you can get out with the most money possible. PvP is not always the best way to loot or to get loot. However, sometimes PvPing is the best way to get the loot because they, they do the looting for you. Think of it that way as well. If you have a scav and you haven't found anything in a while, sometimes it's best to just eat yourself in the resort or down Kaiba's hallway and just go for Alamo and customs. And you never know, you may end up killing a thick boy or you might end up killing the boss and then you get all the loot for on a free kit. I mean, it's happened to me a few times. It's happened to my friends a few times. Sometimes you just have to do it and you never know what might ha happen. I mean, it only takes one to the head and... and you you win so what's the worst that could happen it's a free kit for scavs if you're doing pmcs then maybe you want to be more careful but if you're running like pistol runs with the pilgrim and stuff like that definitely do what's best for you go make the money use this kind of these routes and these areas to find the best loot spots for you and get to know them because the better you know the loot spots the more money you're going to make down the line so I hope this helps you out, guys. I hope this helps you guys out so much. I want to help you guys make the most money for you. Go drop a like. Go ahead and drop a comment down below if I missed something, if I missed a certain spot that you want me to do in a later video. I'm sure as we get updates with maps and such like that, I'll be remaking these videos. So go check those out. Go ahead and drop a like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day. Goodbye. Deuces.